Hey there and good morning everybody. Welcome into your DFS Minute brought to you by DFSArmy.com, your one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy sports, all sports, all tools, all coaching, everything unlocked at DFSArmy.com when you become a VIP. Use that coupon code CHOPCHOP, trigger that 20% off discount, and for a limited time, maybe another day or two, use the code New Year's for a 10-day five dollar trial that unlocks everything gives you a good sample of what it is that we do today's dfs minute is more going to be focused on a thought that i had so i'm going to ramble a little bit and i apologize for that i'm still going to try and keep it short uh, but i'm trying to work through something that just popped into my head it's something that logically makes sense to me but something i can't articulate yet and i absolutely hate it when that happens because that kind of stuff stirs around in my brain drives me nuts uh, but I've uh, solicited a few of the sharper minds inside DFS Army. We've got some math majors with higher level secondary, you know, like master's level education um, in mathematics and statistics and things like that. Some of these guys that work behind the scenes and help us out um, are actually very, very brilliant people. And I wanted to make sure mathematically this works out because, again, it just it makes sense in my head. So let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about, because the first thing here is using a comment um, with one of our members that a few weeks ago the optimal was spitting out Bayesmore last time I went down and you know blah 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 he was 40% owned the second optimal gave me Carmelo who was 10% I rolled with the second and Carmelo went off and got me top five my advice is to look more than top optimal and go with your gut so while you're looking at that while you're thinking about that let me tell you kind of let's set the stage and tell you kind of where this is going because when you run the optimal lineup in Domination Station or anything, you're relying on straight projections. Number one, that does not make you a better player. That does Eventually, you're going to become the low-hanging fruit that the industry picks on because you're not improving as a player. You're not getting better as a player. Now, if you want to run that side-by-side -side and play a little game with yourself of, I'm going to run the optimal because it seems to do pretty well over time. I mean, it's been cashing this year so far, I don't know, 55, 60%, something like that. And if that's better than you're doing on your own, fine, do that, start there. But play a little game with yourself and build your own lineups too off of what the coaches say and compare it to the optimal and where is it different and where is it the same? Does, is it doing better over 20, 30, 40 slates? Build a sample size. Am I doing better than the optimal? Am I doing worse than the optimal? Am I am I more boom or bust? Meaning if the optimal runs in a channel of say, you know, somewhere between top 75% of the world and top 25% of the world that doesn't ever really get deep into GPPs, but your lineup by comparison, yes, it can crash and burn some nights with a 90th percentile type of run, but some nights it gets into the top 10%, then you need to run the, you know, assess your contest selection and, and see where you fit in as a player. That's the kind of coaching and stuff that we help with inside uh, DFS Army quite a bit is helping you pinpoint where you're strongest. But you can use that as a little competition with yourself and play a little game. But just know that running the optimal by itself is not going to make you a better player. However, within that process, there are a couple things you can do. I believe, and this is where I'm going with this, I believe that cash games are getting so tight, uh, especially in NBA, that it is worthy of taking some risk. And I've talked about that in previous DFS Minutes. If you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, go back. Uh, look through, find some of the titles that maybe can tell you what I'm talking about and click on those and watch those, then maybe you can you can understand, you can catch up or kind of find out where I'm going with. I believe that the evolution of the game is, I guess, forward advanced enough that there's a big glom of players set right around that money line. And if you can jump them, you've got, you, you gain a lot of ground in a very, very short period of time. So to me, that makes sense to take some risk, and that's what I'm soliciting the math guys to help me kind of articulate. But that said, you can use that trick, and that gets into ownership, and we always talk about how we never pay attention to ownership in cash games. I don't even know if that's the case anymore. Um, and yeah, a lot of people will disagree with me, but you know what? People disagree with Galileo and shit like that back in the day too, so whatevs. Um, I believe that taking risk in cash games will pay off if you structure your contests accordingly and by doing that we can look at some ownership when all the projections are really tightly uh, gathered together around themselves and there isn't a lot of difference between some of these guys and, and there's a lot of duplicate lineups or a lot of lineups that are really close they're only different by you know different by one guy or two guys then what we can look for is a little bit of ownership leverage and that's what uh you know what cuddy here just mentioned which was I looked at the three optimal lineups that the optimizer ran by default, 
And in the first one, I saw a pretty chalky guy that I wasn't all that confident in. So I looked at the second lineup down and it was close in projected points, but it had a pivot in it that went from a higher owned guy to a lower owned guy. And I figured, hey, I might get a little bit of leverage there if that works instead. I think that's very, very smart. I think that that post is going to be very, very underrated and it's going to slip under a lot of radars. So that's why I'm pointing it out uh, is I, I think that that is absolutely on the right track in the right circumstances. Now, how do I know this or where am I going with this and why am I setting all of this up and starting to ramble? Well, I'm going to take you into the staff only room for a brief minute because it's not a lot of top secret information that's being shared in there today. But what I did want to show you is a little bit of what uh, we were talking about earlier. And that is right up here. Okay, we were talking about last night, kind of, I'm personally tracking our optimal a little bit because I want to test it against myself too. If you've ever seen me track my stuff, um, I'll show you here real quick. The percentages that I've done through baseball and some of these through NHL and some of these through NBA that I'm starting to track is just kind of a fun game to play. If you go over, you know, 87 or so contests, I mean, preferably at least 20, 25 contests, but 50, 100, 200, whatever, you're going to see your ups and downs. This is just a percentage. I would take the the, the place that I finished in a tournament vers you know, divided by the number of total entries in the tournament, and I would write it down. I like 100-man leagues. So this is kind of what I'm using as my track because it's easy percentage. Wherever I finish 23rd, top 23%. Um, 48, top 48%. And this is going to help me track very, very quickly with just a dollar a day. It's going to help me track the lineup production or the lineups uh, consistency and strength and how up and down it can be. So I'm building my own MLB lineups through the last two months of last summer, uh, not including September. And these were my results over 87 slates, almost three months if you do one a day. 55 lineups were in the top 50, so that's 64%, meaning I can beat a 50-50, meaning I can beat a triple up, meaning I can beat a quintuple up, uh, meaning I can play these 100-man leagues, and by winning four of them, I, I'm in them often enough, I can build a bankroll through this playing all the way up through 100-man leagues. And do the same for NHL, do the same for NBA. So while I'm tracking that optimal, um, got to talking with another staff member, Emdel, last night. He said he was like 93rd and only 11 points behind the cash line. And I and, and it made me go, that's exactly what I saw last night too. I was 86. I actually finished about 78th. But I suppose it was less than, you know, 10 points or so back. So I went back and tracked it. What we did, I asked him to track it and I tracked uh, mine. He did his. And I did mine. And the cash line in my 50-50 or double up or whatever that I used last night was 296.2 with a bunch of duplicates at 24th place. So if I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see where's the curve. Top 50%, top 40%, top 30%, top 20%, whatever. Where is, where's the drop off? Where do we gain max leverage? And there's a couple of things to talk about in there. Number one, 24th place was actually 30th because it had six duplicate lineups in it, uh, you know, which is just par for the course for NBA these days, only 7.7 .7 points higher than the 296 cash line, or only 2.5% if we use a baseline benchmark of 300 points. Everybody says they try to hit 300 points, or they used to. So easy for the math again, 7.7 .7 divided by 300 is 2.5%. So if I only gain 2.5% more points, bang, I'm automatically up here in like 24th place. I'm cashing easily with just eight more points. Eight points out of 300 isn't much. That's a, that's a very, very small difference. It can be luck. It can be a pivot. It can be a lot of things. It can be Paul George's damned injury last night. It can be a lot of things. But 20th, let's go 10 places further, was 306.6 or only 10 points more, 3.5%. Look at the difference. 2.5% from that 300 benchmark, or roughly the cash line, 2.5% got you 20th place or 30th place. 3.5% got you 20th place. That's a big jump. You just jumped 30 freaking people with 10 points added to your score. That's insane. 10th place, so top 10%. Now we are halfway through the min caches. You get to min cash and GPPs at about 20%. You get to 10%, you're winning 10 man leagues. You're placing second in like 20 man leagues. You're winning five man leagues, or at least you've got a shot at it. If you don't run up against another guy who had a slightly better night than you, you're winning nine out of your 10 head to head competitions. 10% lineup is pretty damn strong, and it's only 5%. 5% better score, and you jump nearly 40% of everybody in the world. To me, that's earth 
shattering. Everybody is using optimizers. Everybody is glommed up on these same projections, more or less. It's just how they randomize, how they pivot, or a little bit of order, or a little bit of maybe they ran it at you know, four o'clock today and some news broke and now they're they're a little bit different than me or you, but we're all gonna be largely the same if we're all using these damned optimizers. And and the trick is to now everybody's all, when, when the fish are all out there in one great big school, what do the dolphins and the tuna do? They go diving in and just chew them up because they're exploitable, because they're all balled up in the same damn place. Now, that brings into a couple of different things. There's going to be a lot of volatility if you play that 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 bubble, that pig in the python. If you read my words there, what I mentioned, the pig in the python has, you know, it, it, it it's hard to get over. But once you get over, man, smooth sailing on the other side. But if you fall just a little bit short, climbing up that python, climbing up that that you know that bump, bell curve, if you will, then you might find yourself in 78th place and only 10 points off the cash line. You were still damn close. So by taking a little bit of risk to get on the other side, you know, a 5% chance isn't really the reward that it, un it unlocks in an avalanche of triple ups and quintuple ups and multipliers and getting, you know, up into those cash lines of those GPPs really helps these laddered and layered lineups that we talk about inside DFS Army. If you don't know what the ladder system is, go Google it. Ladder system DFS Army. It can revolutionize your game and the way you choose contest selections. But that said, you might also fall short. And if you fall short, you're going to increase the variance or the volatility of yourself inside and out of that when you're living inside that pig and that python, inside the meat of that bell curve. Okay? What you need to do is you need to get to the other side. How do you get to the other side? Well, you've got to take a little risk. That risk is going to further increase your volatility, which only means that you're going to finish in the 90th percentile more often, and you're going to finish in the 5th percentile more often. And that's a good thing if you can get to that 5th percentile. So that's why we're going to track our percentages. That's why we're going to talk a little bit about pivoting in cash, even recognizing ownership in cash. And is it smart to get away from, or is it smart to live within it? Those types of things. As this theory starts to come to a head, I'm going to prove this to you. I'm going to show you that cash games these days are no longer full of drooling, low-hanging fruit. They are full of optimized lineups. And when they're full of optimized lineups, that is equally as exploitable. It's going to take some variance. It's going to take some volatility up and down because the money line has moved. 300 used to be a great score. Nowadays, you know, it's pretty standard. Part of that's due to scoring on the sites, but you get where I'm going with this. The money line has moved forward a little bit in time because the game is getting better. So... How do we get over that hump? That's what we need to do. Start taking a little bit of risk. And then, because we're taking that risk, layer our contests on the other side with events or contests that pay us more than just two bucks on the dollar for every time we hit them. Three bucks on the dollar, five bucks on the dollar. And then get into your GPPs where you can start winning eight, 10, 12 bucks on the dollar. And then have a shot at a hundred bucks on the dollar or a thousand on the dollar or whatever you want to play, but have the majority of your stuff backed up with the smart stuff. And the other method that I'm forgetting, actually, the other method would be to drop 50-50s altogether and just start with triple ups. I mean, if it's only a 2.5% jump, really and truly, out of 100 slates, theoretically, you're going to get caught in there two times, where, oh, no, I should have been in a 50-50 and not a triple up because I didn't make the triple up line, but I did make the 50-50 line. Ah, crap. That's not much to worry about over time. You're, if you make pretty much you're, if you make the double up, you're gonna make the triple up because the, the the line just isn't that much further. So if you wanted to just completely drop 50 50s, hey, I could get on board with that and say, what's the point in putting money in a 50 50 when I'm gonna hit the triple up just as often? These are things we talk about inside DFS Army. So I know we're going on 14, 15 minutes today. Hopefully this was enough to give you some food for thought and show you that we know what the hell we're talking about inside the coaching sites, and you need the answers to your questions. If you get in here and start using our tools and whatever, you can be a little bit overwhelmed. You're going to have questions. You need the people that can answer them, and you need the people that can teach you the ins and outs of the games that nobody else writes about and nobody else talks about. Everybody tries to tell you out there in the industry that they can help your game, but we are the original damned coaching site out there we are the everybody has discord and stuff now where do you think they got that idea we were the first ones to have a slack chat forum that absolutely centers on your game use that trial 
10 days, $5, code New Year's, or just come in straight away, CHOP, C-H-O-P, and trigger that 20% off discount each and every month you stay a member. Down there at the bottom, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, like it, smash that notification bell so that it rings every time I upload something to YouTube, pass me around on social media, whatever it is that you want to do. I enjoy doing these videos. I enjoy that you guys are giving me positive feedback, and we'll keep them rolling going forward. So have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you, I don't know, very soon, next couple of days.